Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Tanashri. I'm a doctor working in the UK and I make videos to help you in your NHS journey. Today I'm going to talk about co-surgical training application process and I have a very special guest and a dear friend, Dr. Abhinav Singhal, who will share his experience and provide his expertise on co-surgical training application process, who will be joining us soon. So stay tuned. But first, let's quickly understand the application process. Now, if you remember from the last video, we discussed the CCT route to getting on the specialist register, which generally has two parts, core training and specialty training. And the core surgical training program is essentially for doctors who want to pursue a surgical career in the UK and who are entering the NHS immediately post MBBS with not much experience in surgical fields from back home. I will link the core surgical application handbook in the description box below and I've broken down the application process into a few steps for your convenience. But before that, you need to get familiarized with the timeline of the application process as there would be no extensions in the deadline. Application form filling has already opened since the 26th of October until 23rd of November. So you need to start filling your application soon. Now let's get started with the step-by-step -step process for CST applications. Step 1 is submitting an application on this portal called Oriel. After making your Oriel profile, go to the Vacancies tab and search for Core Surgical Training to begin your application. The application form has three parts. Part 1 includes your personal information, equality and diversity information and employment history. Part 2 includes your training history, references, fitness to practice, competencies, eligibility and declaration. Part 3 includes the self-assessment. Your self-assessment score is essentially a score that you give yourself based on certain criteria listed in the application handbook which includes commitment to specialty, quality improvement or clinical audits, presentations and publications, teaching experience and training qualification. It is crucial that you complete your self-assessment honestly and accurately at the time of application and you will not be able to make any changes to your self-assessment score once you have submitted your application. Also important to note that candidates who are found to have deliberately overscored their self-assessment may be treated as probity concerns and this may lead you to be removed from the recruitment process or be referred to the GMC. All applicants who meet the minimum eligibility requirements for core surgical training are longlisted. All longlisted applicants are required to sit the MSRA exam. Now, what do I mean by minimum eligibility requirement for CST? This is the long list of eligibility criteria which are required for you to be eligible to apply for your core surgical training program. This is all given in the application handbook. However, to summarize, these include your MPBS degree certificate, full GMC registration, CREST form which is Certificate of Readiness to Enter Specialty Training and Evidence of English Language Skills. All longlisted applicants will be required to take the MSRA exam which is a multi-specialty recruitment assessment exam which will form the basis of your shortlisting score. The top 1200 applicants at MSRA will be asked to upload evidence of their self-assessment scores which will be verified against self-assessment criteria. Appeals against verified scores must be lodged within 72 hours of the scores being sent to applicants. Appeals will be then reviewed by consultants who will then decide whether the verified score should be changed or not. The next step is the interview. These need to be booked via the Oriel account itself 
and they are on first come first serve basis. The interview consists of two stations lasting 10 minutes each, the management station and the clinical skill station. The candidate would be scored on the basis of their presentation skills, probity and professional integrity, awareness of safety and ethics, judgment under pressure, prioritization, communication, etc. The interview panel will be comprised of two consultants on each station and there may also be a lay representative on the panel whose role is to check for fairness and consistency. The next step is preferencing. You will be asked to list your choice of training program and the region in which you want to train. Now, what do I mean by choice of training program? Well, certain core surgical training programs are general, whereas there are some themed training programs as well. For example, if you want to pursue urology training, then you can choose a urology themed core surgical training program. Given here, are indicative number of training posts in these regions. The last step is getting matched to the program. Your final score is a sum of your MSRA score, your verified evidence score and your overall interview score. Depending on the score, you would be given a national training number and offers would be made to those successful applicants based on the applicant's ranking and preferences. Okay, now it's time to welcome Dr. Abhinav Singhal. So, hi, how are you? Okay. I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Enjoying the last few days of your annual leave? Yes, last couple of days, <laughs> then back. <laughs> when are you starting again? Monday? <clears throat> Monday, I'm on call from Monday. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm starting with on calls, yes. Okay. Okay. First of all, thank you so much for doing this and for agreeing to do this. I think this will really help our, you know, viewers. Um, I feel that, you know, getting first-hand information from someone who's done it themselves is much better than watching a YouTube video or, you know, going through the application handbook. Mm -hmm. So I'm really very yeah. happy. Thank you. Um, let's start. Uh, firstly, I'll start by giving a brief introduction. Okay. Um, so guys, this okay. is Dr. Abhinav Singhal and he's a core surgical trainee. Uh, what's your deanery, Abhinav? I'm currently working in the West Midlands. West Midlands. Okay. And you're in a urology themed core surgical training program. Yeah. Okay. So we actually started our NHS journey together on the same day in the same trust in the same department in November 21. And um, after one year of JCF post, he applied for his co-surgical training and um, got through. And this year you already started. So congratulations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. so I just have a few questions uh, regarding the application process that I want to ask you. Um, so yeah. let's start Firstly, uh, how much did you score on your self-assessment and what can one do to improve their score? So, uh, I scored 32 out of the maximum possible 52 in the okay. self-assessment. So, I would say that my self-assessment score was not great, but it was like probably good enough to get me an interview. So, what I feel that one can do to maximize their like score in the portfolio station would be audits. I think audits can give you a lot of points. So if you have done like a surgical themed audit and you present it in, even if it's a regional meeting in your trust, it can get you uh, about 11 points, which okay. is huge. Yeah. And the second thing that you can do to maximize your points is try to create a teaching program or like make a teaching program which it, they have like a very set criteria that it should be more than three months and it should be like a regional program for it to be applicable to get you like the maximum points. So if you have like a proper teaching program, which is regional and which is more than three months, you can get up to like 10 points on teaching okay. and other small courses like training and teaching. So the teach the teacher course could fetch you one point as well. Royal college. Man. And apart from that, yeah, any, any, actually, I, I did the Oxford medical one. So there, the teach the teacher courses are done by Royal College, by Oxford medical and by ISC, ISC medical. So all of them run the course. 
and all of them are accepted. Um, so any of the courses would work. And apart from that, they also look for like your commitment towards a surgical specialty, which will be the number of cases that you probably assisted, uh, like a logbook and the number of surgical conferences that you have attended. Papers and publications, I didn't have any, but if you have presented papers or you have publications, that can get, get your points as well. Okay. And these audits that you're talking about, do they have to be in surgery or can they be in any medical branch? So the maximum points are awarded for an audit, which is a surgical themed audit. Okay. But if it is not a surgical themed audit, you will get points, but they won't be the maximum, which is like the eight or the 10 point, which is given for a surgical audit, which has complete completed two cycles, which is like a closed loop audit, which is surgically themed. Okay, fine. And uh, when they talk about, you know, those 18 months of experience in general surgery, is that mm -hmm. rule still applicable? Yeah, it is. So uh, it is only after your foundation training. So if it's, uh, if it's someone who is in the UK FPO kind of a thing. So once you finish your foundation training, which is F1 and F2, any surgical experience out of foundation training will count towards the 18 months. And if you have exceeded 18 months of experience in surgery or any branch, which is surgical, which includes urology and trauma orthopedics as well, it will count towards your 18 months and you will be not eligible to apply for core surgical training if you exceed those 18 months. Okay. So this has to be kept in mind before starting applications. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Uh, next, what was your MSRA score, if you don't mind sharing? And uh, do you have any tips to uh, crack this exam? Because this is a fairly new exam for CST applications, I feel. Yeah, so I think they introduced uh, the MSRA for core surgical training only last year. Yeah. And uh, I scored 524, which standalone was a decent score. Okay. But I would say that if if you want like your rank to be higher, then probably you can target for a higher score. So um, I would say it's a very difficult and I would say it's a very vague exam because it comprises of like a situational judgment test part, which is very based on ethics and like day-to-day -day situations that you land up in. And the other part is the actual theory, like the medical part. Uh, so the medical part was decent, which was not very difficult. The questions were a little vague, but what I struggled the most was the SJT because we like, What's especially as international, the SJT, which is the situational judgment test, the ethical questions, okay. which is, which okay. is like half of the, half of the exam. Okay. So what I struggled was with was the SJT because like as international medical graduates, I think we are not exposed to these kinds of questions a lot. So that's why it was kind of difficult for me personally. Any resources to study for this exam? So I used uh, Pass Medicine and MCQ Bank. So these are the two resources that I use for preparation. Uh, I feel that the questions in the exam were not close to either. <laughs> I mean, there, there was like an over, overlap. I think it was closer to MCQ Bank uh, rather than pa past medicine, but I think past medicine gives you a very good idea about how the questions are and the theory because the explanations are brilliant in past medicine. So these are the two resources that I used, but a lot of people do use other resources like eMedica and stuff. Okay, fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, would you recommend any resources for interview preparation? And how was your general, uh, you know, experience with the interview? Any particular area that the applica applicant should focus on? So I think I felt that the interview was quite straightforward. It was a 20-minute interview. Uh, I used a resource called as MediBuddy for okay. core surgical training. So it was really, really helpful. It had like almost all possible clinical scenarios that can, they can ask you in the interview with very detailed explanations and what you exactly need to tell them what they're looking for how in, do you structure uh, your answer well. yeah and how how do you structure your answer and medibuddy also helps you with the ethical questions which is another station in your uh, interview so i think it's a very good resource that's what i use plus apart from just medibuddy it'll be really really helpful if you ask one some a few of your registrars to help you with the preparation have gone through this process so i asked a couple of my registrars to help me and maybe do a few mock interviews with me 
which I feel really, really help because you get like first-hand feedback from the registrars that you're working with. So that actually helped a lot. And did you have a study buddy or did you practice with someone regularly? No, not really. I basically just used uh, the online resource and I practiced with a couple of uh, registrars. That's it. All right. Okay. Thank you. Lastly, uh, you are in a urology themed co-surgical training program. Could you share your thought process mm -hmm. why you decided to choose this program and how did you decide which deaneries to rank first? Uh, so you're preferencing basically. Yeah, so it was very difficult actually because like uh, when they give you, uh, when they ask you to pre rank your preferences, you don't actually know what your rank is. So it's very difficult. You don't know where you stand, uh, what your rank is, but you still have to preference all the possible uh, like clay training positions available. So I think it's very difficult to rank like 650 or 670 Yeah, I think uh, it's positions when you're not... that they do that. They should first give you your rank and then ask to, you know, fill yeah. a choice, but that's not how they do it. <laughs> No, it, it was very weird because I didn't know where I stand and to rank all of the positions. It, like yeah. in my head, I was like, oh, what if I get a position which I really don't want? But yeah. then also I did not want to not rank that position because I was afraid that I'll lose the spot if yeah. I don't get in or something like that. Exactly, yeah. So basically I ranked it in a way that, uh, first of all, obviously the program, um, whether I like the rotations in the program, plus secondly, the location, because I did not personally want to stay in a place which is like really small or remote. Yeah. So these are the two factors that I kept in mind uh, that how good the program is, what rotations are there, what kind of hospitals that I'll be rotating through and the location. Okay. And did you only, uh, you know, rank urology theme programs or did you even rank general co-surgical training programs as well? I, I ranked all of them, almost all of them, but I ranked all the urology ones uh, the highest and followed by TNO, general surgery and so on. So you filled all 650 posts then in your application? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I did not want to risk it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, there's no point risking it. So I, That's the best I put everything, say. but I was... Yeah, but I was hoping that I prob uh, like I I would get like something which is in the top one hundred and fifty that I ranked, which which was like all the programs that I would really want to go into. So, and I did get one of them, so it was fine in the end. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well done. Um, congratulations once again, and thank you so much, Abhinav, for doing this. I'm sure this will mm -hmm. help our viewers immensely. Um, all the best to you, and uh, I hope we meet soon. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Bye. Take okay. care. Bye. Okay, guys, I really hope this video makes your CST application process smoother and that you have more clarity now. If my content is helping you, please like, share and subscribe to my channel to show your support. I'll see you in my next video and until then, take care.